Ahoy, hoy, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of the Disney Dining Show. I'm your host, Craig Williams, and today I am joined alongside by Rhino and Erica. And we are here at Disney's Fort Wilderness, and we are eating at Crockett's Tavern. So this was the bar attached to Trails End that is now a lounge-style restaurant. Inside, there is lounge fixins. There's a brand new menu of drinks, which uh, we probably will try. We just won't review since uh, we don't review alcohol as part of our content. But uh, you know what? Find us in person. Maybe we'll tell you what we think about some of the drinks that we have. Anywho, got to remind you, this is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel. If you like our content, you want to support us, book a vacation through Dreams Unlimited Travel. It costs you no extra money, and you get the support of an amazing Dreams Unlimited Travel agent. So head over to dreamsunlimitedtravel.com today for a free, no obligation quote. Now, the great part about Crockett's Tavern is they've got a to-go window right behind me that we could easily just walk up and order drinks from, but why do that when you can go inside? Uh, who even needs to go inside? I mean, this is a beautiful patio, like, get a rocker out here man you could have a perfect night i man i gosh fort wilderness huh isn't it a grand place but uh, i guess we need to eat i don't know where i found the strawberry <laughs> shortcake from but we are going to head inside and we're going to check out what's cooking at crockett's tavern Oh boy, oh boy, oh Davy Crockett, we are seated in the tavern now and we have ordered one of everything. And our server is um, a really, he's a really good guy, really nice guy. And uh, he's uh, told us he's gonna space all of our stuff out uh, and he is gonna start us with the charcuterie board. And that he did. Now this charcuterie board, I'm gonna read you the menu description and I'm gonna tell you what he said. So the charcuterie board says it's a selection of meats and cheeses with house-made bread and butter pickles to made a jam, cornbread, crostini, and a sesame lavash for $21. Now, if you're wondering what sesame lavash is, it's not a dip, because that's what I thought it was, but it's actually those, like, flat, crunchy crackers. I mean, those people out there being like, this idiot didn't know what a lavash is. I didn't grow up with that lavash money, so everyone back up for a hot second, okay? All right, so we've learned things today. So, like we said, the board had cornbread, crostini, sesame lavash, Gruyere cheese, there was some smoked turkey, some house smoked turkey on there, the bread and butter pickles, which were also house made, there was a pork confit, which was pulled pork um, and reduced down here in house as well with that tomato jam, a salami, and then that goat cheese, thyme, orange blossom, honey, sort of like dip buttery type material. Um, so on the charcuterie board, Honestly, I liked the lavash, um, but I I um, I feel like for me the smoked turkey was probably the best. I wasn't really wowed by it. The 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 crostinis, the um, the cornbread crostinis are super cute because they come out looking like Mickey heads, um, and those are a lot of fun. And um, I felt like it's you like. There's enough stuff on the board. I just didn't. It wasn't a board where I was like, oh, I want more of any of this. I don't know. Like it was okay. It was an it was a good selection, but it was just kind of like uh it, I don't know. I don't think I would get it again. I did not care for the charcuterie board at all. I would never get it again. I did like the cornbread crostinis. Those were very fun, whimsical, delicious. The gruyere wasn't bad. Neither was the the goat cheese dip. Well, it was just like everything else, though. I didn't like... Bread and butter pickles are disgusting. Uh, that lets me know that Satan himself made the charcuterie board because he would only be the... He'd be the only bold one to put those on any charcuterie board at all. So, yeah, I will never get this again. Out of all the things that were ordered, I had two. I got the crispy cauliflower that it comes with a garlic aioli for $9. That is plant-based. And then I got the fried green tomato sliders, which I shared with everybody. Um, it is southern. There's a southern remoulade and a citrus greens served with seasoned french fries. They were, in fact, seasoned, and you get this for $14. It's also a plant-based item here. And I have never had fried green tomatoes before, and I can come to the conclusion that I like them. I did not hate them. I thought they were good. Um, I loved the citrus flavors that came through. Here's my only issue with the crispy cauliflower. There was some broccoli in there. I was like, 
there's some green ones, and I love broccoli, but I wasn't expecting any broccoli. But I did like the crispy cauliflower. I thought it was very good. And yeah, those two things were fine. I liked them. I would come back to get those again. And let's see, the chicken bites, they also looked good. Um, so if I came back and I spoke to a chef, I think I would end up ordering that as well um, instead of ordering the same exact thing that I just got. But yeah, it's, it's a good little meal here at the lounge. The lounge is cute and it's perfect food to have with a nice drink. Rhino and I decided to be little piggies together, so we split a trio of sliders as well as chicken bites. A uh, trio of sliders are served with seasoned french fries. You get three sliders, pulled pork slider with barbecue sauce and coleslaw, brisket slider with Carolina barbecue sauce and pickled onions, and a buffalo chicken slider with house-made blue cheese dressing and dill pickles. $16, and clearly someone got the memo on this one because they included dill, not the bread and butter pickles. Uh, of the three sliders, my favorite was the buffalo chicken one. Uh, the brisket slider, to me, it I think overall it might have had the best flavors to it, especially with the pickled onions, then like the uh, the kind of acidic barbecue sauce with it. Uh, but the brisket itself was very thin, very dry. Uh, the pulled pork to me just was boring. So I wasn't a huge fan, even with the coleslaw on there, didn't do it for me. But overall, it's a nice little sampling of the flavors. Uh, for the chicken bites, you have the choice of buffalo, garlic, parmesan, or blueberry barbecue sauce, and it's served with celery, house-made ranch, and blue cheese, and served with seasoned french fries for $15. Was there celery on ours? Because I don't remember that. That's a shame. I needed a vegetable today. I haven't had any. Uh, and I think we only had ranch. I don't remember blue cheese being on there, too. Uh, none of that matters. We got blueberry barbecue sauce, and it was an awesome house-made sauce. I thought it was gonna be on the sweet side, uh, but it wasn't. It just had nice notes of blueberry, and uh, so you got the sweet and salty going on with the chicken. I Don't even use ranch or anything on it. Just enjoy and savor the flavor for what it is. You know, if you get buffalo, why not? But if you're doing that blueberry barbecue, which I would recommend highly, just take it in for all it's worth. And the chicken bites weren't like just chicken nuggets. They were like, they were nice, like, good white meat chicken mini tenders so yeah i dug them i'd get them again from the plethora of food that we were just talking about um i think i would say the crispy cauliflower was a must for me i really enjoyed that although i'm gonna be 100 percent honest with you i didn't realize it was a garlic aioli until erica just said that because i thought it was also ranch I think everything is ranch. Um, so, um, but yeah, I love I love a good crispy cauliflower, and there was like big, nice, like hearty chunks of cauliflower. So I really liked that. And then um, I also did enjoy the fried green uh, fried green tomato slider. My one kind of knock on that is just that it's a little like when you bit into it, um, it was a little wet, a little wet in the middle. So um, it's a it's a it's a little bit of a slimy green tomato slider. Um, the chicken bites, I agree with what Craig said pretty much about everything is I thought that blueberry barbecue sauce was gonna be so sweet and like in your face blueberry and it was a very subtle blueberry flavor on ours. Um, so that was really actually quite nice. Um, and then in terms of the trio of sliders, I don't think we were in agreement on which was our favorites and I will tell you Right now, that brisket slider said it came with Carolina barbecue sauce. I don't think I got really uh, any of that when I tried it. I thought the brisket was fine, but I, my, like when I took the bite, I was like, this could use a sauce. So I don't think it was present. I also didn't realize the chicken one was a buffalo chicken one, but to me, when I bit into that, I was like, this tastes exactly like the McChicken sandwich at McDonald's. Um, and now I'm realizing it said it had house-made blue cheese on it. There might be something wrong with me if I didn't taste the sauce and I didn't know this was buffalo chicken, so don't trust me. But um, in addition to all that, yeah, we got more because there's also the Trail Blazing Dessert Trio, which is a s'more with chocolate pudding, graham cracker crumbs, and house-made marshmallow. There is the strawberry shortcake with strawberries and whipped cream, the banana pudding, which is uh, served with vanilla wafers, whipped cream, and banana chip. Those are $12 
three cute little mason jars of those. And for me, I would say the banana pudding was the best, followed by the s'mores, followed by strawberry shortcake. And in the description of the strawberry shortcake, it says strawberries and whipped cream. And I took a bite and was like, is there not shortcake in the strawberry shortcake? And there was like a little cube in there. So it definitely had that that rich syrupy flavor of like strawberry shortcake um, that you that I feel like can be present in a lot of those type of desserts. Um, so I don't know. That one was that one was okay. The s'mores I thought could have used um, a little bit more a thicker layer of the graham cracker in it, but it was okay. It's like chocolate pudding with a house made marshmallow on it. So I think the banana pudding one though yeah. with the vanilla wafers that was like really nice and light and um, I don't know that one hit the spot for me. So I would recommend that one. But here's the thing: it's the trailblazing trio. You don't get to choose. It's all three and nothing at all. Actually, I don't know if that's true. You could probably ask, but I. I doubt there's substitutions or things like that. So that's it for me on the desserts. What do you all think? I'll tell you what Erica thinks about the desserts. Absolutely nothing because they were not made for her, as in they all contain dairy, so she couldn't have any of them. But that's okay. You know, we, we pounded down those puddings, and I will say... <laughs> For me, the best one was the s'mores. I, I know it was just simple chocolate pudding with that house-made house made marshmallow on top. And I'm not a huge marshmallow guy, especially when it comes to s'mores. My ideal s'more is a... Go with me on this one. My ideal s'more is you take two There's pieces chocolate? of graham cracker <laughs> and you put them... You sandwich them with a Hershey's bar. No marshmallow. Just the, just the chocolate and the two graham cracker. That's my favorite. Uh, style of s'mores. <laughs> so, uh, I, so, yeah, I kind of I kind of dug that one. The banana pudding was a close second. I had the banana chip on there. Rhino didn't get a chance to have that. And it was crunchy. It felt like it was uh, dehydrated with care. Okay. So they're making it right in-house for good reasons. Uh, yeah, the only one I wasn't super wild about was the strawberry shortcake, which probably didn't help that, you know, hours ago when we did our review of Trails End, I did the individual portion of the strawberry shortcake from Hoopty Doo that they have in Trails End. And I mean, that is so heavy on the breading. It's, uh, you know, it's strawberry shortcake how you want it. This one just felt like more strawberries and a little bit of cream than anything else. So I just, I didn't think it was as balanced. I mean... It was all still great together. This is a, a banging dessert trio. If it, like if they all sound interesting to you, I don't think you can go wrong with it. They were all delicious. Uh, if I was picking my own personal trio, though, it'd be s'more, s'more, s'more. <laughs> but it was all good. I, I did enjoy it, and I would have this again for sure. But since Erica has no desserts to talk about. Again, dairy. Sorry. Uh, that's going to do it for this episode of the Disney Dining Show. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you get over here to Disney's Fort Wilderness and uh, try out Crockett's Tavern. It's, it's uh, you know, this is a pretty solid lounge, I have to say. Uh, it's, it's comfy. There's lots of seating. You know, it's cool inside here. Cannot complain about it at all. Uh, if you want to support us more, book a vacation through Dreams Unlimited Travel. Get a free no-obligation quote today at dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. If you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe to the channel. Leave comments, questions, video suggestions in the comments section. And if you are listening to this, subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. Leave us a rating and review when possible. But that's going to do it for this week's episode of the Disney Dining Show. We'll see you again soon with another. Take care. Bye-bye. Stay hungry. Yummy, yummy.